Hey guys, Tarot here bringing you a 1v1 today. We are on Crossroads Winter. We've just spawning in the north. We have Hikura playing his Osir, who has Jaeger Infantry, Blitzkrieg, and Spearhead. From the south, we have the true successor playing his British forces, going for tactical support. This is a Patreon backer submitted game. Hikura around rank 370, the true successor around 170 is Brits, but do remember that is Brit ranks and they are a bit easier to come by. So raid section start here with a Vickers. I know that uh, Alpern has been playing quite a bit of raid section action, and I did for a while as well. Uh, I typically went for like one engineer, so does Alpern, and then three raid sections. Just the Vickers just suck so much. Especially if you're going up against an Osir player who are quite prone to going snipers against Brits in the first place. And snipers are also quite good against raid sections as well. Kind of like they're quite good against riflemen as US forces. So making yourself even worse in that matchup again by going for an immobile machine gun that's Quite a bad machine gun in the first place. Uh, not, not the best idea. Maybe it's more for, forgivable against uh, OKW though. So a little bit of a skirmish there. Trying to hunt down the sniper. Get some hits on it. Unsuccessful though. No uh, machine gun start for Hikura here. Just going straight into that sniper. After the first green here. And uh, under a lot of pressure on the cutoff at this stage. There's one good thing about the raid sections. Tend to get off to a very fast start with their strong capping power. And being a calling squad instead of having to build them. Do also have the option uh, of instead of going for the third raid section in a situation like this. Teching up and going for the sniper to counter snipe. Also a valid option, especially if you saw the sniper like this early on. And can actually react to it before you got your third raid section called in. Oof, that's a very close call on that Grenadier. Lucky break for Hakura getting away there. Sniper doesn't have vision anymore, so can't force away the machine gun without taking return fire. Doesn't have healing yet, so trying to avoid taking that damage. Look at this territory control. M monstrous, really is. Guns and peered launchers can now be used by many units. Okay, weapon racks ticked. There's a lot of munitions. So even though the Vickers doesn't. Uh, have very good moving performance like it should do. Still might do alright in this particular scenario. Uh, if you want to go for like a fast tech to like a centaur. I think that would be a good option with how the game has started out here. Weapon racks are trying to bridge the gap, make it so you're not bleeding too hard. Obviously the Brits don't have a strong like vehicle that can assist in pressure during this phase. AC is kind of a bit more defensive, you know, fighting back against your opponent's like vehicle. So that's what I'd be thinking about currently. We've got the uh, Vickers on this raid section. Also could go with some Brens. Though, you know, against the Sniper, even with the nerf performance on the Vickers, might still be the right option. Since the Brins can't fire back at all while on the move. Okay, dropping in Damn the air resupply operation. Kura has picked up a machine gun later on. And the cut off again. The squad eventually forced off. Start getting a couple hits because sprinting onto the cut off. 
I can see that. Let's get a sprinkle of damage on him for V1. Sniper losing vision. Trinity's coming in on the flank. MG getting out of there. Did decap at least. Oh, big damage from the Vickers. But retreats out this way. So I'm going to get out of there alive at, at the very least. The enemy has broken our supply lines. Hmm. The uh, map control has been so strong for the true success up until this point. But now we're running into a bit of a manpower bottleneck, opting to go for the air resupply, reinforce all that stuff. If instead, uh, you know, just invested into tech. Wouldn't be too far away from a centaur by the time the tech are completed. And a centaur at a timing, you know, like maybe 10 minutes. Centaur, that would be extremely strong. Instead, you know, I've got a bunch of support weapons which aren't as useful when you're this far ahead. Making use of the uh, crates for some healing there. And a 222 in the build now for Hikura. Start a construction on it, 7 minutes 50. Uh, a capture point is being overrun has seen you know the plane come through and with this commander should know that it means air resupply so there should be an anti tank gun somewhere on top of the very late timing does make the 222 a worse option probably oh jumped out of the wrong side of the building as well i suppose either side was going to be tough to get away but ouch Our capture point. They're trying to take it. oh big damage onto the sniper Suppression kicks in though, keeps it safe. Here comes the 222 now, hiding behind the building. A little bit of a lag there. It's one shot though. A few more retreats forced. Tech grounding here, hoping to catch the 222. Not happening. Captain on the far side. Getting to work here, 2 to 2 coming in for a sprinkle of damage. We have a fresh grenadier squad. Oof. Eventually gets the suppression going. Grenadiers left there for a very long time for Hakura, forgot about that. We got some base out to fire, it looks like, trying to get the uh, cut off going. The company command post is finished and ready for use. This is a little bit slow coming in. He's got them both unlocked though. But yeah, I mean, could you imagine a centaur? Like, you know, he's, he's got the fuel for it. Could have constructed it maybe about a minute ago. So it would have been hitting the field right about now. And what would Hikura have to counter that? Absolutely nothing. It would be a runaway victory. A capture point is being overrun. Still. Very strong territory control. Way ahead on the victory points. Wiped that green Damn earlier, I think it was. So it's not a very nice position, but. Sniper starting to get a few kills going. 13 so far. 222 hasn't really done anything to this point. And now no sweeper for Hakura either. You know, these raid sections can plant mines at Vet 1. So it's a very good idea to get uh, to get a sweeper when you're up against this commander. Because typically, because the Vickers is so bad, you know, plays most of the time these days don't tech weapon racks. At least until much later in the game, and the early munitions are spent on the Molotovs and the mines. So you can expect, you know, with three squads potentially planting mines, 
can speak to run into quite a lot of them. But uh, now that the meat crates uh, stun to uh, run dry, true successor in a bit of a bind when it comes to healing. Also deciding to go for the Cromwell, which is typically a, a very safe option. But, you know, in this case, still with Hikura having almost zero point. territory control, hasn't even got the battle phase done, so it would be a mile away from a uh, actual tank, a centaur, a even, it's just a much better option at this kind of timing. Maybe around like the 14 minute mark, maybe then the Cromwell makes a bit more sense, but this early centaur, a much better choice. Fully equipped with all the vicars and uh, got some friends now as well. Our capture point. They're trying to take it. And that is a powerful force. Gonna need to get our uh, medics next, I imagine. Or could just try close the show, go for another tank. Get really aggressive. Oh, misses point. that shot. Got the AT gun waiting on the other side. Which means the Cromwell should have chased around this side so the 222 continues to go around this way into the anti tank gun. Instead, tried to double back. So the anti tank gun doesn't get a chance to fire. Good machine gun positioning here. Oh, but that firepower before everything gets suppressed, just too powerful. Machine gun gets decrewed, and even with the suppression, might still be able to get that kill. Need to stay stationary though. Oh, that's so close. Her second machine gun for Hikura, I didn't notice that. It's under pressure now. Here comes the pack. Next once. Double machine gun's also a pretty good option against raid sections, kind of like... A good option against four rifleman kind of builds. Come on. Few drive bys. If he starts the sniper, definitely needs repairs for the Cromwell. Going for medics as well. Maybe a little bit too much blobbing at the moment. Need to branch out, get some capping going with one of these squads, and preferably it should be one of the raised sections since they have that capture rate bonus, and that way you can keep the section with the bonus sights with maybe the majority of your forces so it can uh, spot for the enemy machine guns and maybe a slight mistake there again for the true successor leaving that machine gun so that Hikura could jump back on it had the AT gun nearby could have maybe just killed it off instead Spinning around here. It's a nice shot in. And yep. Good time to retreat there. Engine is in the build now, but yes, yeah, so slow getting this Cromwell back. No vehicle crew repairs or anything in this commander. So, engineer should have probably been in the build immediately after the Cromwell. Sprinting around the corner here with the raid section, it's a good idea. Focus on the machine gun, tossing out the incendiary device. Got some good hits going. Oh, that could be a D crew, there it is. I think that was a mortar shell, right? Softening it right up, but the 222 doing well, coming in from the side. It's almost getting repaired up now, but you know, all this fighting through the center. But over what, you know? There's so much territory out to the side. It's just free. Free and open. 
fighting basically over this one VP when, you know, there's so many resources as well as a VP on the far side. Maybe you can pull the Aussie player around, get their team weapons out of position instead of having them all channeled into the one area. Very long time repairing up that Cromwell. Don't have uh, any bolster or anything. Of course, Brits don't get a repair bonus with their sweeper upgrade. Jumped out of the wrong side of the building there as well. Don't want to be doing that. Cypher potentially could have uh, got the kill there, I think. Cypher did end up retreating to the mortar, though. Okay, coming up to the side with this squad, but as I was saying, I think it's good to try and keep that with the bulk of the infantry so that it can provide vision, help avoid these double machine guns, maybe spot the sniper long range, and then use a raid section on the edges. Capture rate bonus, get some mines down. One more coming in here. Machine gun got it. Oh, could have got the decap there at least. Hang around for a couple more seconds. Looks like gone for anvil, which means probably going to be the crocodile next. Two to two coming in. This could be the kill. The Cromwell, the packet pulled all the way back, but Cromwell lost its nerve. Keep going for the kill shot. These hearts of fire coming in. Meanwhile, Cromwell on prioritized vehicles has to be manually targeted to fire there. It's around the side with this raid section. Sniper still getting some great hits in, and the second pack now joining in on the fun. Cromwell out to the side. Still on prioritized vehicles, so not shooting back over there. Could have probably forced away this grenadier by now. Maybe a bit of a crush attempt. But at least got some territory going, you know, got a second VP, turned up the pressure, got a decapture on the cutoff. Our capture point. They're trying to take it. It's uh, a good option. Don't know if the true successor is aware of the double AT guns. Don't know if he's seen them both on the screen at the same time. Yet. Oh. That section hasn't vetted up yet, so it seems to be dying very quickly. It's going to be a s bit of a slog repairing that back up. Does have the heavy engineers at least this time. But yeah, the reason why I said going for Anvil, probably going for the Crocodile, is because. You know, the bonus repair speeds do make a big difference on that. Oh boy. Coming in from the side. Cromwell backs this direction. Staying in the pack's arc. The pack misses. Cromwell's still in the pack's arc. Attack round missing. Cromwell extremely lucky. If he just backed this direction. Easy escape but backed just about the worst possible way. Okay, going for a regular Churchill. This is not advisable. <laughs> so close to the to the crocodile. Just just about there, oh, half a command point more, and it's just a ten times better tank than the uh, regular Churchill. As a four on the build for Hakura. But now Hakura is definitely stabilized, you know, he's got the double MG, double AT gun kind of set up with strong infantry base, three grenadiers and a sniper. Might strain for repairs a little bit, but other than that, Hakura's pretty much uh, back in this match. After getting almost completely run off the field. see what this uh, 
this big boy can do. Getting quite a lot of munitions float now, so maybe about time to consider the forward observation post. Maybe like somewhere around here. Decent option on this map. Start putting those munis to use. The uh, anti-infantry planes from it could be very strong and breaking up these team weapon formations during an attack. Probably what I would recommend. One infantry kill on that, eh? It's like, I'm pretty sure it hasn't killed anything, but... Here comes the crocodile. Okay, he's crushing away all the hedges, it looks like intentionally. Trying to open up the map. I don't know if that's actually to his advantage though with a sniper on the field. And uh, Hikuru going for a stug straight away after that. Still on prioritized vehicles with that. Okay, looking to press into the center. Could, you know, put down some smoke. Maybe like smoke off over here would be a pretty common option as you try and push into the middle. T gun connecting once, twice. Oh, right. That's regular section though. Can away raid sections. Pressuring that AT gun. The crocodile now coming into the center. There we go. The T-Gun threads the needle, knocks out the 222. The Cromwell coming in from this side, still on prioritized vehicles though. Not shooting. Manually controlling the attacks, but it's not the best in these kind of situations. Here comes the Stug, the AT-Gun lining up on that, but the Cromwell getting battered. The double packs now lining up some big damage on the Churchill, which is getting stuck on the VP flag. And also dying very quickly. The Panzer IV coming in. Bounces the kill shot. Stug chasing in. Looking for the Churchill wipe. Unit lost. Dash it all. Oh, it's probably going to find it. Oh, it misses. Cromwell somehow still alive here. Oh, there goes the Churchill. There goes the Cromwell. A T-Gun decrewed though. Could maybe get the next one as well. Stug dead. Panzer IV is still spinning around here with the engine crit. I don't think that's going to get away either. Pops the smoke. Nowhere to run really though. Oh, raid section left over here. Forgotten about. Looks like it's going to survive. A T-gun under pressure. Could be a time to pop take aim here on the Vickers. Got plenty of munis. Maybe boost up the range. Help fight back against the sniper. T-Gun trying to kill off the decruit pack. That's not a bad idea, actually. Jumps ag again. Need to be using the proper way to get out of building. Select the building, hit tab, right click, so you come out of this door. That's, you know, once maybe I could see it as an accident, but twice like that, that's definitely incorrect technique. Needs to be addressed. That's one of like the first things that you need to sort out. There was like micro tips one. Maybe maybe micro tips two, but it's one of the uh, absolute fundamentals in this game. Enemy threatening a capture point. So yeah, that was a, a very mismanaged engagement for the true successor. The double packs really lighting up his tanks. Having all sorts of pathing issues through the center around that VP flag. And now, slightly behind. Close to the crocodile again. So, you know, closer to the next tank, I suppose. But if you look at army sizes right now, you can see over 10 behind. Doesn't have a particularly good way of dealing with these double machine guns either. Mortar can do some work, but not if it gets forced away by by uh, units earlier on. Gonna need to make better use, I think, of the site 
It's like expecting a machine gun to be around here somewhere, do small movements forwards with the vision sight, with the vision squad. Remember that Tommies also get a sight bonus in cover. So you kind of need to be inching forwards, moving from cover to cover to really take full advantage of the vision. See the machine gun, you know, There's a crocodile ready to maybe cause all start kinds a flank on it, get your mortar start barraging it, so on and so As forth. The line's broken. We're losing a capture point. So you're just like right clicking forwards, expecting to be able to cap there. It's not going to work against the double machine gun player. Well, Recon plane up, going to see this crocodile hitting the field. But the double AT guns are all the way back, maybe wanting to heal them up before they get involved in the fighting again. MG just suppressing there. Can crawl forwards and get out. Right, go on to the cutoff here, but a lot of S mines. Good move from Hikura. Good flame burst though, forcing that away. Where's the AT gun? Back at base still. I think you cannot buy more Vickers if you drop one of your Vickers. It's one of those upgrades that didn't get fixed. Kind of like uh, Panzer Shrek's on P Greens. You can build another one. I don't think that's an option for raid sections. Probably alright, just pick up a, a Bren. I feel like Bren's on raid sections are better anyway. <laughs> Good amount of damage. He's not quite able to finish the job on the pack, or maybe he can because it sets back up for some reason. Gets one shot in. Churchill, Crocodile com committing. Hoping for the D crew. Got the AT gun up here now. The Panzer IV's in some trouble. Pop smoke to get away. But both AT guns here destroyed by this crocodile. He's coming in with the Panzer IV again. And he pays the price for it. And that is a devastating blow to Hikura. Definitely should not have left that it's like a two man very low health pack to try and sit down and shoot it's incredibly greedy and I don't know why the Panzer IV came back in either I think the crocodile still would it definitely can take two shots maybe even three before dying and with its armor value you know, penetrating three shots on it it's like going to take like It's, it's a long time. Probably about a minute. <laughs> a minute of shots on the frontal armor. The enemy cut our supply line. But the crocodile only has one squad to repair back up with, so that's going to be very slow going. A T gun actually getting decrewed over here. Do have the mortar? Could drop some smoke on it. If he's worried about the recruit. Crocodile gonna return, which is fair. I mean, you know, with both A T guns dead, what does he really have to worry about? Maybe like a, a stug. And nice flank there on the machine gun, forcing that off. Getting chased away over here, that sniper's still a lethal weapon, 43 kills. Another engineer now for faster repairs, I think that's a wise choice. But Hikura has done a very good job on the VPs. The true successor now ticking under a hundred points. Considering they were up by... The new engineer section is waiting for orders. 200? Pretty much, they're pretty much, yeah. Maybe, maybe like 180 to 500-ish. That's a massive it. reversal in Fortune. And I think a lot of it is caused because these troops are running into the machine guns then retreating and so they just can't get any field presence. We have 75 points left. 
picked off by the sniper recon plane up in the air the crocodile still getting repaired up still needs to recruit that anti-tank gun as well so the engineers are going to branch out but hit by the no they're not make a dash for that vp pyres are over there Good hit there from the crocodile Rolling forwards, Stroop and AT gun. A good position here though. Oh, I don't want to take a Faust. This is this is really bad trouble. The AT gun has been recruited. I fire off a smoke here. If possible with the uh, croc. Coming in from the side with some infantry as well. But the Stuck decided to back off here, playing it very safe. I think that was its time to close the game. Tigan misses its shot on the Stug. Stug. Clock has stopped right now. Maze doesn't find its targets. Pressing out of the base with these raid sections, trying to get their map capping going. Pyro mobilizing, maybe thinking about putting some S mines down over here. Might have been a good option. Looks like that's going to be shut down though, V3 raid section. Too powerful. MG covering over here. Still have that uh, mortar, but it's back in base. All these squads back at base doing nothing, full health. Okay, gets a D crew on the AT gun somehow. Shot on the Stug as well, but. Oh, a bit of a traffic jam there. Oh, this could be the D crew on the six pounder. Oof, that was a close one. Now we're going to come through. Oh, did it? I didn't see that. Is my my wipe indicator not working? Did it? I don't remember seeing it. At least. Maybe I'm just blind. Crocodile diving in here, but takes an engine crit. The Stug can now pick it away. Pick it off from range. The T gun's all the way out the back. Jumps on this pack as well. The crocodile could be in some major trouble here. Some base out to fire coming in though. It's a good option to try to clear off the pack. Even the Stug could be at risk of dying to that base out to fire. Gets hit by the blind smoke shell out from the crocodile. It's a good idea. Now be able to get away with it. Sent over here, only caps this one thing, need to queue up more commands afterwards. Ooh, and right as he's moving those, takes a rifle nade and gets wiped. And now a second Stug for Hikura. Should counter the crocodile pretty effectively, the AT gun still needs healing back here. Mortar sent in to do some capping. Unis points not going to be connected. Still repairing this up. Just about to remove the engine crit. Just about to get to 75% uh, health. You can't play up for Hikura. sections definitely having a easier time now that that sniper is dead just call on the machine gun Not pushing ahead looks like he wants to get close enough to flame away the uh, machine gun and there wasn't quite enough damage to get the engine crit on him but here come the double stooks the AT gun back at base at the moment oh this could be the end of the crocodile Got a couple squads coming through for the snares. Tigre A1. 
Oh, not the second one. Maybe didn't have vision in the smoke. Here it comes, though. A T gun rolling up. Somehow the uh, MG managed to hang in there. The T gun connects once. Pops smoke himself. Tap ground work. Miss. Still has range for one more. Oh, misses again. Vic is doing well through the centre. The squad has capped up this entire corner of the map. But Hikura is still 2.28 remaining on the clock. Not too worried about that. And another church room now. Bouncing there. We're upgraded. Good. Double Stooks though still has the uh, ingredients to fight this off. Decided to go for a mortar half track. That is a very strange call. Not not recommended call either. Did he get that after he saw the regular Churchill as well, or did he get it before? I didn't see the exact timing, either way. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Up against the one Vickers, you don't really need a mortar half-track for that. Mortar's oh, trading... Uh Shots on each other's support weapons. Okay, getting the observation post up now. And that should help close the show. Damned enemies trying to take a point from us. Crocodile very aggressive, no support. Some big damage from the Stugs. One of them up to Vet 2 now. We'll have to upgrade it. We're losing a capture point. The T gun smoked off here, neutralized. Recon plane coming in for Hakura. Crocodile getting blasted. Great splash of flame damage there. A T gun setting up. Regular Churchill getting hammered. Backing away now. The crocodile getting in deep, right on top of the pack, and gets the deeper on it. And somehow got the kill on that Stug as well. How did that happen? You see it, even not that low in health. We were having trouble fighting back. These Churchills is just so much health to chew through. You kind of need a vet 3 on your Stugs. You need those rate of fire bonuses. really uh, make it work. Jumps on the MG42. Here come the planes though. And that's what I was talking about. This completely shuts down the infantry of Hikura. Recon plane also a strong option. Might as well, I'd probably just drop it now as well. So constantly have targets for the anti-infantry plane and maybe you can use that vision to send your AT gun forward to kill off their AT gun as well. Ouch. Came into the danger zone there. This anti-infantry plane from this is very powerful. Okay, so coming out to the far side, looking to ramp up the VP pressure now with the triple cap. Looks like these squads maybe going to hit to this far side, which is open at this stage. Doesn't have to keep running into the middle. Another 
last pass of that ability. We can get some uh, AoE suppression on those far squads. Got the base here for forward reinforcement now, so it's much tougher to dislodge these support weapons. A capture point is being overrun. Keeping up this entire side of the map, but Hikura making inroads down here. You gotta be careful though about that crocodile potentially getting these squads wiped on retreat. Crocodile still getting uh, awaiting repairs. True successor could squeeze one more engineer into the build, which is probably the way to go. Can really run into some pop cap issues in these late game brick compositions. Sometimes even it's worth taking bolster just to because you kind of get like one extra model on your engineers, which is, you know, like 25% more performance, but only like, what? oh man, tough mass, like 17% more uh, pop cap cost, something like that. Enemy threatening a capture point. So, you know, if, you, if you've got the resources spare, you're in the ultra late game. Bolster with these kind of, like, no early bolster strategies can still make sense just for better repairs when you're running up against your pop cap limit. Ooh, raid section left here for a very long time. And it does not escape. Got the troops over here, but so is the AT gun. Backing away from the old Strooks, AT gun spins around. We got a flat panzer from Hikura. Very strange choice. Strooks backing off, taking a hit or two. Here comes the crocodile now. Oh, one more shot, and that Strook is dead. He needs to blind, but he doesn't have the munis for it. Oh, and this is not looking good for Hikura, I think. Pretty much going to do it. And they're making the best of things while well, all the anti tanks are on the other side of the map, but it's not enough. Oh, well, you can see uh, the power of the crocodile in this match. You know, it's got the health pool, it's got the damage, really just devastated Hikura. Had the option, you know, as I was saying, to uh, go for that instead of the initial Churchill, which could have been a, a better option. It was about half a command point away. And uh, we saw what happened to the first Churchill. Didn't really get up to much with it. Crocodile was just so much better with that flamethrower, especially if you're up against like a, a double pack style build, double pack, double machine gun. Be able to come forward, spray a little bit of flames back up. Just makes it way better. But all right. Also, I think maybe the true successor, a little bit too stuck in his ways with this build order. Um, you know, sure, going for the machine gun first. It's, it's all right, but as we saw here, did get quite exploited by that early sniper for Hikura. Um, and going for this air resupply when there was like a maybe nine or like a 10 minute Centaur as a possibility to just completely overwhelm his opponent and maybe close the show extremely early in the match. Instead, you know, taking a slower path, going for all these team weapons, which weren't really that necessary. Um, need to maybe adapt to the game circumstances a bit better. Hikura really just uh, struggling so much in the early game to that raid section pressure, you know, with the capping speed with their combat strength are a real handful to deal with in the early stages, but got to a, a reasonable position, but just had no answer for the uh, crocodile, really. Stroke control was a little bit lackluster, didn't manage the ranges well enough, and uh, ended up getting overwhelmed. GG. Well, anyway, guys, wrap on that. If you like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. 
Otherwise, I'll catch you off the next thrilling instalment. Goodbye and good luck.